Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Airing 429. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to the Airing 429 protocol, how it's used in modern commercial aviation, and how Airing 429 signals are decoded and analyzed. Modern aircraft consist of many different systems, for example, airspeed sensors, heading indicators, vertical speed indicators, automatic pilots, etc. These systems must be able to quickly and reliably communicate with each other in order to exchange both information as well as commands. And in modern aircraft, this communication is almost entirely digital. Dedicated point-to-point -point communication between each of these devices would be prohibitive in terms of space, weight, and complexity. So in many modern aircraft, the state is transferred between devices over a shared set of cables, commonly referred to as a bus. Large commercial aircraft, such as passenger jets, may have up to hundreds of these data buses connecting systems from dozens of manufacturers. So having a standardized bus is clearly desirable. Airing 429 is one of the most widely used standardized serial data buses in civilian aviation and was first published in the 1970s by Airink, or Aeronautical Radio Incorporated. The official name of this system is Mark 33 Digital Information Transfer System, but it's generally simply referred to as Airing 429. This specification defines both the electrical characteristics of the data bus, as well as the format of the messages, called words, that are exchanged over this bus. We'll spend most of this presentation covering both of these topics in much more detail. The greatest advantage of Airing 429 is that it enables interchangeability or interoperability between components in avionic systems, especially when these components are provided by different manufacturers. Airing 429 is primarily used in large airliners, such as the Airbus A300 or most Boeing 7X7 series aircraft. Airing 429 is generally too complex and expensive for general or non-commercial aviation, and a different standard, MIL standard 1553, is more common in military aircraft. Let's start by looking at the physical layer and the bus wiring itself. Airing 429 specifies a shared two-wire differential bus with one transmitter and one or more receivers. The two wires called line A and line B are both twisted and shielded and they're normally grounded at the ends and at junctions. This helps to reduce the possibility of externally generated noise corrupting signals on the bus. Messages are sent unidirectionally over the bus at rates of either 12.5 kilobits per second, called the low rate, or 100 kilobits per second, which is the high rate. The slew rate of these signals is also specified, that is how quickly the signal should rise and fall between the 10% and 90% amplitude points. Next, let's look at voltages. As mentioned a moment ago, the Airing 429 differential bus uses two wires, the A or high wire and the B or low wire. The voltages on these two wires will ideally be the same, but will have opposite polarity. For example, in the case of a logical one, line A will be at plus five volts and line B will be at minus five volts. For a logical zero, line A will be at minus 5 volts, and line B will be at plus 5 volts. This behavior is then repeated for all bits in the word. Note that these are nominal voltage levels and have a specified tolerance of plus or minus half a volt. Also keep in mind that the actual voltage levels seen by the receiver will vary slightly depending on the length of the wire, the attached loads, environmental noise, etc. The differential bus voltage is obtained by subtracting the B-line voltage from the A-line voltage. This results in three possible states. The first is a high voltage of approximately plus 10 volts, which represents a logical one. The second is a low voltage of approximately minus 10 volts, which represents a logical zero. As before, this repeats for all transmitted bits. 
The third state is the idle state, in which the differential voltage is approximately zero. The reason for this zero voltage is that the AirInc 429 bus uses something called return to zero encoding, meaning that the differential bus voltage always returns to zero between transmitted bits. Return to zero encoding has the advantage that it enables the bus to be both self-clocking as well as self-synchronizing, eliminating the need for a separate clock line or synchronization bit sequence at the beginning of each transmission. Next, let's talk about topologies. There can be up to 20 AirInc 429 nodes on a single bus, and these nodes are often referred to as line replaceable units or LRUs. Transmitting and receiving LRUs can be arranged in different configurations or topologies, the most common of which are the star topology and the bus drop topology. Although AirInc 429 links are unidirectional, it is possible to support two-way communications by using a pair of buses, one for each direction. Note too that a single LRU may have multiple transmitters and receivers, allowing the creation of subnetworks or networks with a hybrid type topology. AirInc 429 sends data across a bus in the form of 32-bit words, which can be sent periodically or aperiodically. Each of these words contains or encodes some type of data. You may hear this data referred to as engineering units. Examples include altitude, wind speed, position, fuel, etc. The 32 bits of an AirInc 429 word are divided into five fields. The label, the source destination identifier, the data, the signed status matrix, and a parity bit. We'll cover each of these fields in much more detail over the next few minutes. Although the content and meaning of the label and parity fields are fairly rigidly defined and adhered to, there can be some variation or flexibility in the definition of the other fields, particularly SSM and SDI. Although words are represented with the most significant bit on the left, words are transmitted starting with the least significant bit. One peculiarity of ARIC 429 is that the most significant bit of the label field is the least significant bit of the entire word. We'll discuss the label field in more detail on the next slide. Another thing to note is that a minimum synchronization gap of four bit times must be present between each consecutive word. Otherwise, a gap error will occur. Now let's go through the fields in the word, starting with the label. Labels indicate the type of information contained in the transmitted word, and this field consists of three octal digits in the range of 0 to 377. The meanings of the labels are given in the specification. For example, the value 014 in octal means that the word contains the plane's magnetic heading. One important thing to know about labels is that they are encoded backwards. Let's walk through this using the label 134 in octal. The conventional way of representing octal numbers is with the most significant bit on the left. So the label 134 would be encoded with the bits in this order, 1, 3, and 4. In an AirInc 429 word, these bits are encoded backwards or reversed so it's necessary to read them from right to left, so to speak, when visually reading off the value of the label. In addition to providing the meaning of the word, the format of the data field is also determined by the label. And since words are sent repetitively, each label also has a defined maximum and minimum transmission interval. This is typically on the order of tens or hundreds of milliseconds. If the label value is set to all ones, that is octal value 377, this indicates that the word also contains an equipment ID. The equipment ID is encoded as three hex digits in the data field. For example, an equipment ID of 10D would be individually encoded as four bit digits in this order of significance. The purpose of equipment ID 
is that it allows receivers to recognize the source of information. This is important when data can be derived from multiple sources. The Air Inc. 429 specification contains a list of equipment IDs, but keep in mind that equipment ID is optional and is not required for proper or normal operation of an Air Inc. 429 bus. Following the label is the 2-bit Source Destination Identifier, or SDI. This field can be used in two ways. The first is to identify the destination of data on a bus with one transmitter and multiple receivers. Each LRU on the bus has its own identifier, and 00 is used for broadcast. The other use of this identifier is specifying the source of data on a multi-transmitter bus. This is most often used in the case of dual or duplicated systems. The SDI field is not needed in many cases, and these two bits may be used to extend either the label or the data field, although the actual implementation of this is often proprietary or manufacturer-specific. The data field in an Airink 429 word is 19 bits long and can be formatted in several different ways. Some of these formats are given in the specification, but proprietary methods can also be used. Note too that the format of the data frame may affect both the SDI bits as well as the interpretation of the SSM bits. We'll come back to this later. There are five standard data field formats in Airink 429, but in this presentation, we'll only cover the three most important ones, namely binary data, binary coded decimal, and discrete data. These formats may also be combined as a so-called hybrid data format. Over the next couple of minutes, we'll look in more detail at these three data formats. As the name implies, binary data encodes data as a single binary number, similar to the way that numbers such as integers or floating point numbers are represented in computing applications. Most often, this format is used to encode continuous values, such as airspeed, altitude, temperature, etc. The label determines the number of bits, the units, the value range, and the scale factor, or number of units per bit. For example, if you wanted to encode a speed of 512 knots, and the maximum encodable speed were 4095 knots, then we would use only the nine most significant bits of the data field and would pad the remaining bits with zeros. Values may be signed or unsigned, and bit 29 can be used to carry the sign. It's worth keeping in mind that sign in avionics can also be interpreted as direction. That is, a negative sign can also mean south versus north, east versus west, etc. Another method of encoding numbers is binary coded decimal, or BCD. Here, groups of bits are used to encode individual decimal digits, and this is most often done for displays or other humanly readable outputs. A BCD formatted data field can contain up to five digits. One field is only three bits, and thus can only encode numbers zero through seven, while the other four fields are four bits and thus can encode 0 through 9. Although not explicitly signaled, these values may have an implied decimal point. For example, the five digits shown here might always be interpreted as having two decimal places. And as with other data types, the SSM bits can be used to indicate the sign of the digits when necessary. The last major data type in Airink 429 is discrete data, where each individual bit of the data field has its own meaning or significance. Most often this is used to show status, that is the presence or absence of a condition, things such as on or off, active or inactive, etc. For example, here the value of bit 15 could show whether flaps are up or down, and bit 16 could show whether landing gear is up or down. As mentioned earlier, Airink 429 data fields can also be hybrid or a mix of formats, and unused bits in a BNR or BCD data field are commonly used to encode various discrete bitwise information as well. 
The signed status matrix consists of two bits, whose meaning depends on the data type. If the data field is binary data or discrete data, the SSM bits indicate the operating status. Be aware, however, that the meaning of these bits depends on the data type. 00, zero means a failure for BNR, whereas it means normal operation for discrete data. For BCD data, which is numerical but which does not have a native sign bit, the SSM can be used to indicate the sign of the data, that is whether the BCD coded value is positive or negative. As before, this can be a true numeric sign, but can also indicate direction or orientation. It bears repeating that the meaning or interpretation of the SSM bits depends on the type of data contained in the word. The last field is the parity bit, which enables basic error checking. Erring 429 uses what's called odd parity. This means that every 32-bit word should have an odd number of ones. If not, the parity bit is set to one in order to make the total number of ones be odd. For example, this word has an odd number of ones, so the parity bit is left at zero. But since this word has an even number of ones, the parity bit must be set to one in order to make the total number of ones in the word be odd. Parity is checked by the receiver, and if the check fails, the receiver knows that at least one bit is errored. Keep in mind that parity can only detect single bit errors, and that some type of errors, such as two flipped bits, cannot be detected. Before we conclude this presentation, let's take a minute to discuss how Airink 429 buses can be analyzed and decoded using an oscilloscope. Since Airink 429 is a differential bus, in most cases a differential probe is used. That said, in some cases the bus can be decoded using a standard single-ended passive probe to acquire half of the signal from either the A wire or the B wire. Oscilloscopes can provide a great deal of information about an Airing 429 bus, starting with the decoding of messages. A scope can also be used to check the physical layer, that is the electrical properties, of the signal. This includes timing, slew rate, etc. Furthermore, multi-channel oscilloscopes can provide information regarding the timing of protocol and non-protocol events. With regards to message decoding, Triggering on or filtering Airing 429 words based on message content is also a common feature. Many scopes also allow results to be viewed both per word or in table format, and user-friendly label names can often be displayed based on an imported description file. Let's end with a brief summary. Airing 429 specifies a serial data bus for use primarily in civilian and commercial aviation. This bus uses differential encoding to provide robustness and return to zero encoding for self-clocking and synchronization. Bit rates are either 12.5 kilobits per second or 100 kilobits per second. Data is carried over this bus in the form of 32-bit words, which consist of five fields, a label, the source destination identifier, the user data, the signed status matrix, and a parity bit. Oscilloscopes are very useful in the design, debugging, and troubleshooting of Airink 429 buses, both at the physical layer as well as at the protocol layer. And although Airink is a differential bus, in some cases single-ended probes can also be used for decoding. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Airink 429. If you'd like to learn more about aerospace protocols, analyzing these protocols, or about oscilloscopes from Rodian Schwartz, Please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at rodi-schwartz.com.